Hey guys, so I'm here to bring you another <coughs> kind of re-edited old video. Now this is a really long one. I could of course compressed it and made it shorter, um, but you probably would miss out on some details. This is one of my first videos. I had no idea what I was doing. Camera angle was really bad. You see all of my chins, like the camera's down low and you're looking up at me. It's probably the worst camera angle on the planet, but you do see exactly what I'm doing with the denim. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll be back in just a minute. So we're gonna film another video. Um, in a lot of my videos, you see I have this apron on and it's obviously made out of old jeans. Um, I'm going to show you how I made it and um, the other couple of things you can get out of the scraps after you make one. Um, years ago, um, I was crafting out here in the studio space in the garage and the humming in the background is my fans because it's really hot out here in the summertime. Um, anyway, um, I got really tired of having most of my wardrobe covered in glue, gesso, glitter, paint, whatever. Um, I was constantly coming back in the house with stuff all over my clothes that wouldn't come out in the laundry. Um, and that's okay for some things, but I don't want my entire wardrobe to look like that. So I decided I needed to have an apron for when I'm out here, and I really wanted something sturdy and durable. I was going to use one of my kitchen aprons. I have a lot of kitchen aprons. My other love is uh, cooking. and. Um, but they were so pretty and you know I like wearing them when we have dinner parties and I didn't really want to get paint and glitter and stuff all over it so I thought I'll just make one but I have no budget for it so what do I have that I can use for my stash or what's in the garage that I already have to make a good durable denim apron and my husband had just got done cleaning out his closet and um, had a bag of old jeans that had holes in them he was going to get rid of and light bulbs went off in my head and I said, ooh, denim. Denim works really well, it's really thick, it's really durable. I like that idea. So I took my favorite kitchen apron and I made a pattern from it, which I'll show you in a minute, and I'll show, walk you through how to do that. And I'm gonna show you step by step how I made the apron and what I used. Um, you only need a few things, of course a sewing machine. Um, with your sewing machine, as I've said in other videos, you really should have denim needles. Um, these are thick, thicker and sharper than a regular sewing machine needle, so they're going to go through all the layers of denim with relative ease. Um, I use these a lot, as I've said previously in other videos, because um, most of my sewing anymore is dress, not dressmaking. Um, it's making our journal covers out of canvas and doing denim aprons and stuff like that, so I use these a lot. Um, you're also going to need a sharp pair of fabric scissors. Of course, a pair of blue jeans, some tennis balls. I know you don't get that, but you will in a, in a little bit. Some ribbon or strips of fabric that you can use for the straps. This happens to be like a thick grow grain ribbon. It's like an inch and a half wide. Um, this is a 25 yard spool. It's from Harvest Import. Um, I've posted their link before. I'll try to remember to post it below the video again. Um, I get, if you have a seller's permit or a resale number, um, they're great to get stuff like this from. Um, you also need a pillowcase. This one I took is a king size, and in the hem, I cut some holes in it and put some string. And I know you don't understand why you need that, but you will. Um, and I'll go through that in a minute. I'm going to get everything set up and change the camera angle and I'll be back. Okay, so here's my pattern pieces. Um, this is the apron body piece. Um, this here is cut this side, this whole side on, the, on a fold. Um, we'll go over that in a minute. Um, I had a person I made one for um, before that requested, she liked the pockets up here, but she also wanted a pocket down here. Um, and I got really interested in doing the idea of like a sweatshirt pocket. So I took one of my favorite sweatshirts that had a big pocket on the front and I made this. So now I have this pocket piece which you can cut out of the spare denim and put down here if you need, feel like you need extra pockets. She was using hers I think for gardening or something. Um, I don't use mine for that but a lot of the people who buy them from me do. Um, it makes a great gardening apron. Um, so anyway, if you want to add an additional pocket, um, 
you know, feel free. If you've got a couple pair of jeans, cut the back pockets off and put them down at the bottom down here. Um, I took one of my favorite kitchen aprons that fit me really well, and I traced it out on a piece of this board, and that's my pattern. I figured out for me how long the neck strap needed to be and the ties in the back, and I made note of that on here. It turns out there are pretty good lengths for most people. So for the neck strap you need one piece that's 24 inches long and for the ties you need two that are at least 30. Now if you're a little taller than me, I'm not real tall, um, thinner, maybe the straps are too long, um, you know, a little curvier, maybe they're not long enough. Um, just adjust them to fit what you need. Um, this is perfect for me. Um, every time I make one and I change something or add something, I make note right on my pattern, which is another reason I've made it out of board, because I've made a lot of these, and I kind of realized right away I probably was going to end up making more than one. Um, so um, I've made another pocket before that's just a straight pocket across the front, and it was 13 by 12. Uh, pocket placements normally about nine inches up from the bottom and center. Um, you just have to play with it. Whatever notes work for you, write them right on your pattern piece. And of course, write what the pattern is on there. Because, you know, I, I forget. So I, I think I would figure out it's an apron. But um, anyway, this is, you could use poster board, cardboard. Um, I've said in previous videos I work in retail. And a lot of retail um, stores at the end of the season, like Halloween, um, when they're putting out their Christmas stuff, the Halloween signs go in the trash. Um, they're usually made out of this thin, it's like the weight of poster board, but it's this plasticky material. Anyway, I just always ask for a few pieces. They usually don't mind giving them to you because they're throwing them away. Um, and they make great pattern pieces. Uh, but, you know, any cardboard box that you happen to have or, um, you know, go out and get a couple pieces of poster board. I always have stuff like this laying around. So make your pattern pieces, get your jeans and everything else together, and we'll be back. Okay, so we've got our pair of jeans. Um, this is, I believe, another pair of my husband's old jeans. I don't know exactly where they came from because now people just give me jeans now. Um, so you want to cut the top of the, cut the legs off. Um, right at the crotch or right below the crotch. Just cut both legs off. Okay, set the top of the pants aside. I'm a couple inches below the, uh, an inch or so, inch and a half below the pocket. That's kind of what you want. But set this aside, don't throw it away. Okay, so now we have our two pant legs. Sometimes on the jeans, you'll have one hem that looks like this. And then you'll have one that looks like this. Um, we're going to split the the pant legs open to make them lay flat. Leave this seam intact if you have one of these on your pant leg and cut the other one. If you have two of these, which I have never seen, um, when you split the pant leg open, cut this off. We'll go over that. I'll show you what I mean. So you're going to just pick a seam. I usually do the inside seam and just split the pant leg open go all the way up the seam. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Okay, so then you would have a nice flat piece of fabric. If you had one of those double, doubled over seams here, then, then you should cut it off because that's going to be way too much fabric for what we're going to do and you're not going to be able to ever sew through it. Um, so anyway, this one's fine, it doesn't have that. You need a good sharp pair of scissors for this because if you have dull scissors, it's not going to cut through. Okay, lay your two pieces of fabric. Oh, by the way, you need pins. Lay your two pieces of fabric face up. Both hems facing down, just like they would be if they were still on the pants. Okay, so you're going to overlap your two pant legs. 
see if I can get this on camera. So here's one pant leg, and I'm going to lay the other one over it. I'm overlapping a good three or four inches, and then pin it together. Now, go back to this part. So, we are going to cut these open. So first, cut the crotch open. Then, take your pant top, and I want you to cut, remove the back from the front. And I want you to cut it to the back side of the side seam. So I don't I want you to cut the rivet off and leave the seam attached to the front of the pants. Cuz again, that's going to be too much bulk for what we're going to want to do with it. Okay, now you're probably thinking, okay, now this is trash. No, 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 no. Don't throw this away because I'll show you at the end something else you can make out of this. Okay, so if you're a neat nick with your sewing, whether you're a beginner or not, you are going to want to sew this and then, and then do the step I'm going to do now. I tend to be a lazy and patient crafter. So I like doing things all at once. So I'm going to not sew this, it's just pinned. And where I've put the pins is where I'm going to sew it. And where those pins are is where I want the center seam, center back seam, or approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. What I want to do though first, before I pin it and sew it, is make sure Sometimes you get a really short pair of jeans, and you want to make sure that the apron after you cut it out is going to be long, that the piece of fabric is going to be long enough. Um, in this case, there's plenty of room. So just lay it along your center back seam, because that's going to be the fold that you're going to cut it on, and make sure you have enough room for the bottom of the apron. Um, in this case, like I said, I'm, sh I'm pretty short, and I, I make all my aprons about the same size. Nobody's complained yet. Um, and this is plenty long enough. And as I'm saying that, I'm thinking you might want to know some dimensions. So this pattern piece is about 28 inches long. Across the top, right up here, it is four and a half inches. Now keep in mind that this pattern piece is cut so that you have to cut the piece on the fold. So across the top would be nine. And then um, the pattern piece and about the waist is 12 inches um, across. So the finished apron piece would be 24. Um, and then the bottom hem of the pattern piece is about 13 and a half. So the bottom apron hem would be about 27. Um, and then you have the curve here where it goes up underneath the arm. If you're a big, a little bit bigger busted, um, you might you want to adjust this part, make it a little wider. Uh, make start with your top a little wider and make the curve less sharp, um, so that you cover this up. I have a couple of aprons that like end right here. It's not a good spot. Okay, so now we're going to pin our pan, our 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 bot, back of the pants on. When we sew it, you'll notice this. Let's see if I can get it in camera because maybe you don't notice. Okay, notice this is sticking up. This is where the crotch was. So we're going to sew up here because we're going to cut this off. Okay. So I'm going to pin it about where I tend to sew it, where it's lying nice and flat. And then I'm going to go across. Up under, right underneath the pockets.
You don't have to have advanced sewing skills for this. You just have to know how to do a straight stitch and back stitch. Um, that's it. Um, maybe a zigzag. Um, and it doesn't even have to be real straight. Um, okay, so now we're going to sew it. I'm going to um, change the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing, and um, I'll be back. Okay, so I just have some plain off-white thread in, in my machine. I've got my denim needle on. Um, you can use any color thread if you want to do blue, red, whatever. I, I just tend to always do off-white. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew where I have the pins where the um, two pant legs are pinned together. I'm going to sew right about where I have the pins. As soon as I reach my presser foot, make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. When you get up here where the seat, the pants back is pinned to the pant legs, uh, lift this flap up. And sew right up to where you have your pin. And then back stitch. Okay, now we're going to attach the, the, the pants back to the legs. So again, we're gonna, I'm going to start at one side of the back of the pants. I'm going to sew right about where I have my, right next to where I have my pins. And I'm going to back stitch in the beginning and the end and go all the way across. Now we have to do a little trimming before we do anything else. Okay, so first take all your pins out. I just poke myself. Trim off your threads as you go when you come across them. It's one of the things about working in the garage I like, I can just throw the thread on the floor. Okay, so first go to the back of the apron. And like I said before, if you're a neat neck, you want to trim all this business off, you want to do the bottom first, trim it off, then do the top, trim it off. I I'm lazy, so... And it really, in the long run, doesn't make any difference which way you do it, just make sure you trim it off. So you have all this extra fabric up here where the back is sewn to the legs. So you don't need that, so we're going to trim that off. I trim it to about a half an inch. This is denim, so yes, it's going to unravel a little bit, but it's not going to come apart. You don't need to worry about zigzag, pinking, finishing your seam. It is not going to make a difference in the long run. Okay, then you always have this on the back where the two legs overlap. So now we're going to cut this off. And I got a little bit of it caught in the seam, so I'm going to open it back up and then cut it off. Now when you get to the top, you're going to see this. So just like the other part, I just leave a half inch and cut it off so it looks like that. Okay. And that's going to be good enough. Again, if you're a neat nick and that bothers you, do the legs first, trim it, then attach the top, then trim it. 
Okay. Now it's time to cut out our basic apron shape. So now you have this big piece of fabric. Yeah. So we're going to cut out our apron shape. First, we're going to trim the front. So on the front, you want to be a little more careful how you trim. Um, a semi straight line, fairly even, about a half an inch. Cut this business off where it went, uh, where it was the crotch of the pants, because you don't need that. And come up, just like on the back, underneath here, you have this big piece. So lift up this part from the back of the pants. Trim it to about a quarter of an inch. There we go. And then trim this whole seam so it's about a half an inch wide. Okay. That's trash. Now, take your big piece and fold it in half along the back, the seam for the back of the pants. Okay, so you have something that looks like that. Okay. Let's see if I can back you up a little bit so you can see better. That's better. Okay. So now we have it folded in half. So we're going to take our pattern piece and we're going to place this part along the fold. This is our top of our apron, which is where we want our belt loops to be, right? So we're going to match that up to the belt loops. Uh, the waistband is going to be the top of your apron, so you don't need to cut that off. Take a Sharpie marker. Sharpie marker. Trace loosely around the outside of your pattern. Okay. Now, cut your pattern out, making sure you cut off the Sharpie marker. Don't throw this away. This is garbage. It's going to be a little hard when you cut through the pockets and everything. There's a lot of fabric there, but if you have a nice sharp pair of scissors, it'll, it'll happen. Just take your time with it. There we go. That's garbage. Now we have our basic shape of our apron. See what happened? I'm going to cut this tag off because that's going to bug me. Okay, so now we're going to stitch about a half an hour, half an hour, <laughs> half an inch away from the edge all the way around the cut edges of the apron. I'm going to turn the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. One of the many reasons we're going to do that is so when we um, do the final step, uh, it doesn't go too far, but also now that we've cut some of the pocket off, it's going to flap and we don't want that. So. So at about a half an inch away from the edge, just do a regular straight seam, back stitch at the beginning, go all the way around your apron till the other side, all the way down the, both sides, 
across the bottom, up the other side, and then back stitch again. You'll notice I'm not stopping and doing a sharp turn, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a curved stitch. Whatever way is easier for you, um, it doesn't make a difference in the long run whether your stitching is got a sharp corner or a rounded corner. I keep thinking I hear somebody coming in the house, but there's nobody back there. I don't know, it's weird. Go a little slower over the places on the apron that have a lot of denim. Um, you're less likely to break a needle that way. Um, and even though this is a denim needle, um, they can break and they do get stuck. So just be careful. Okay. Okay, so now we have this. It's all stitched all the way around, right? We have this seam here in the front, and there's one in the center, okay? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your scissors, and you're gonna take your apron, and you're gonna trim up to Trim. You're going to cut a slit up to that stitching line about every half an inch all the way around and also here and on, on, on this seam too. Don't do it on the back, you don't need to, just on the front. wider than that. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to measure it. Just eyeball it. It's funny I keep saying how it doesn't need to be perfect because if you guys knew me, I'm a total perfectionist about some things. This is not one of them. I guess even as perfectionists have to let some things go. Just make sure you don't go over the stitching line, and if you do, you need to go re back and re-stitch that part. easier because you just kind of push the scissors in until you get the seam and snip it. And do the same thing here where the two pant legs are attached together. Okay, it's all snipped. Now, this is where the tennis balls come in handy. 
So what you want to do next with your denim apron is, I did never see the point of bothering to hem it because it's denim. I really like the look of raveled denim. So I went ahead and did the snipping like we just did. And then what it does is it ravels. And the more you wash it, the more you wear it, the more it ravels, but it's not going to go past the stitching line. Mine is totally covered in paint. I think it gives it character. But anyway, so the first time I made these, I washed it in the machine, it unraveled, it looked great, but the, the, the threads, yeah, they clogged the washing machine. <laughs> that was expensive. It was like $200 to unclog the machine. So that was an expensive lesson. So what you want to do is if you're going to make stuff like this out of denim, always, always, always put it in a bag. Um, this is, like I said, a king size pillowcase. Throw in a cup, some tennis balls. Um, they wash just fine and it'll help agitate the denim and help it ravel more. So throw those in. Throw your denim in. Use your string to close the top and then wrap it around and tie it off and wash it and dry it in the bag. Okay? After we, uh, I'm going to do that with my denim and um, when we come back I will show you how to put the straps on. Um, first, I'm going to show you what you can do with the pieces. So we have this part and we have the front of the jeans. Um, there are a couple more things you can do with these and you could throw them in with the apron and wash them and, and get the edges of them to ravel too. Um, I never waste anything if I can help it. So I'm going to get my pattern pieces out for that and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Then I'll wash everything and we'll come back. Okay, so I have this other pattern piece. It looks like a D. Made out of that same plasticky stuff. So, it has a lot of writing on it. So anyway, so you know those crocheted kitchen towels? They have the crocheted tops. You see them at craft fairs. Usually somebody's grandma's made it. Um, they're handy, but they're not super cute or modern. I mean, they're okay. I've made a few. Um, they just didn't really fit in with my house and what I wanted. So I thought, why can't I make the top part out of denim? I've got denim. That works for me. So I did. So you can get one towel topper out of the front of the pair of jeans. I'll show you how. So first, pull your pockets up out of the way. Fold it in half. And right here is a great flat piece of fabric that this is going to fit on. Trace around it with your Sharpie. And cut it out. Make sure, like with the apron, that you cut the sharp, Sharpie pen off. So now you have your two pieces for the top of your towel, but nothing to hang it by. There's always a loop, right, with a button? What about this button? So we're going to cut this off. You want about three or four inches on either side of the zipper. Cut off the belt loop, because you don't need that. Cut above the rivet. We don't want the rivets on there. cut off the zipper. Cut right up against the seam of the waistband and that should get everything off that you don't want. Cut this off. So now we have a loop we can hang our towel by. So we're going to sew this in here, like that. The other thing you can do with this is you can make um, pot holders, which I've done. And I use um, sometimes just this part, 
Um, sometimes I use a back pocket um, and then on one side and then a piece of a pant leg like this on the other and you just cut a little strip of denim for a loop and um, in between there's a kind of insulation called uh, interfacing batting called Inselbright and it's for making pot holders and it looks like bad cotton batting but it has metal looks like aluminum foil in the middle um, and um, this is big enough for a hot pad um, and I like to put the back pockets on one side because then you can use it for a uh, oven mitt um, so you can do that too um, let me show you how I sew this together and I'll be back okay I, before I do some sewing I found my other pattern piece this is for the pot holder um, I have some notes on here um, it says cut strap 8 inches long and half inch wide approximately um, two layers of denim one layer of insulbrite this is insulbrite so it looks like batting only it has it looks like it has aluminum foil in it it's heat resistant um, and this is what I use one or two layers of between the denim um, so I'm going to cut that out and then we'll sew everything together right sides together see which way it fits on her better so it doesn't matter is there going to be a seam on here so I would rather the seam was in the middle than at one of the edges so I'm going to do that this is a pocket off of something else so it's not exactly in the right, big enough for the pot holder but that's okay I'm going to just trim it to fit this is an approximate suggestion of size. It doesn't have to be exact. I keep saying that. Okay. Again, if you do wrong sides together, then you don't have to worry about cutting off the Sharpie marker, but if you're drawing on the right side, you do. Um, in this case, I drew on the wrong side, so I don't care if the Sharpie um, marker gets cut off or not necessarily. pocket is probably off a pair an apron I made where they didn't they didn't want this on the top. I did get that request occasionally. I don't understand it, but I get it. Um, okay, so we've got our two layers for our pot holder. I'm gonna just use the grid on my table to cut a strip. For the strap. And then about half inch long, and half inch to an inch wide, no more than that. You don't want it too big. I do want it sort of even though. And then for the insole bright. So when you cut the insole bright, I use the same pattern piece and I trace around it, but I want to cut it a little bit smaller inside the line, kind of significantly inside the line. Not too, not too much. You're going to trim it if it shows afterwards anyway. But like a quarter inch inside the line. That's probably still not enough. It's probably still going to show. I'm probably going to still need to trim it. That's okay. Okay. So now we have that. So now I'm going to change the camera angle and we're going to do some sewing. Layer your pot holder now with wrong sides together with the insole bright in between, and then in one corner, one top corner of the pocket, take your strap piece and place that in the corner a couple inches into the corner. So you have a piece like this, and then we're going to sew all the way around the edge. sew it all together. I'll be back. Okay, so we'll do the pot holder first. It doesn't matter where you start, just make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Sew a quarter inch to a half inch away from the edge. Don't sew the pocket closed. That's the point of having the pocket on there so that you can open it. 
I tend to use the edge of my presser foot for a guide, and that's about a quarter of an inch. Make sure as you're going that you're catching all three layers. That's a broken needle. Oops. And you notice it made me jump. The noise. You also don't want to get the pieces of broken needle in your eye. I've done that before. It doesn't feel good. And that was with a denim needle. So imagine what would have happened probably while making the apron with a regular needle. Um, I went over a piece of the denim that was too thick, um, so you want to be really careful. It was too thick even for the denim needle. And I was probably going a little bit too fast, I admit it. Okay, so this one, thankfully you did it at the end, so this is all sewn together all the way around. Now that we're, now we're going to do this one, so on the top center of the curved part. This is where you want to put this waistband piece. You don't want to sew across the bottom flat. We're going to leave that open. Um, but what we are going to do first is sew about a half an inch in on the bottom of each one of these on the straight part. So on, on this part. You're going to sew up, sew a stitching line in about a half an inch. bunchy at the bottom. Let's try that again. still bungee. Something's wrong with the way the machine's threaded now, so I'm going to fix it and I'll be back. Hi guys. Okay. Broken Needle had some problems with the thread tension, but it's all fixed now, I think. Um, okay, so I'm going to sew across the straight end, back stitching at the beginning and the end, on both pieces. You'll notice I didn't cut my thread. about a half inch up from the straight edge and then they're going to be connected, cut them apart, and then put wrong sides together and in the center of the curved part you're going to insert your little piece of waistband so it's in a couple of inches. Okay, we're going to hold these all together and we're going to sew just around this part. We're going to leave this straight part open. So start at one corner and go all the way around the curve and end at the other corner and make sure you back stitch at the beginning at the end. If you're the type that needs to pin it, that's fine. said it before, I'll say it again, I'm a lazy crafter, and so if I can get away with not paying something, I will. <laughs> okay. When you go over these waistband pieces, offset them just a little bit, and go slow because it is really bulky and you don't want to have a needle break or something like that.
little piece where it's still bunchy. I'm going to sew that part again. I don't know what's up with the thread tension. It's very weird. It's probably time to take my sewing machine in to get it clean. Okay, so you're going to end up with something like that. And this part down here, this is open. I'm going to change camera angles. I'll show you how I trim these up. And then we're going to add them to the bag. And I'm going to wash them and I'll be back. Okay, so to trim these up, for this one, for the towel topper, do on the bottom, on the straight edge, do one layer at a time. And on the straight edge, trim it like just like you did at the apron, about a half an inch all the way around. I, I should say, all the way across. Flip it over and do the other straight edge. Then trim into each corner. Making sure you get any loose bits of thread off as you go. And then also trim all the way around the curve up to the stitching line about every half an inch or so. When you get to where the waistband piece is sewn in, you have to do one side and then flip it over and do the other side so you don't cut off your waistband. Okay, so that one's all trimmed. I'm going to add it to our pillowcase. Now on the um, oven mitt. So we left our pocket open so that we can use it as an oven mitt. Um, but I want to wash it and fray the edges like I do with the other denim. First, I want to take and I want to trim this insel bright back. All the, almost all the way to right to the seam so that it, there's not so much of it showing. So I'm going to pull the two pieces of denim back and carefully just cut the insel bright. Don't cut the denim. And cut as much of it off as you can without cutting your denim. Don't go fast, go slow. If you have a pair of applique scissors, sometimes that they can um, help when you do this. If you don't have those or you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. Just hold your denim back out of the way. Go slow. You only want to trim the insole bright. Um, and you just want to trim most of the bulk of it off. Like that. Now we're going to take and we're going to do just like we did on the other pieces and we're going to cut this up to the stitching line about every half an inch we're going to cut a slit. Because there's a pocket on one side of here, some parts may be bulky. So you just want to go slow. You might have to cut one side like right here and then cut the other side. Try not to go more than like three quarters of an inch. Now right here, the stitching line is over the top of the pocket. I'm not going to even cut slits there because it's not going to ravel. I'm going to start back over here. 
I only cut the slits in the back piece, not in the front piece. Okay, slits are all cut. I'm gonna add it to our pillowcase. Pull the string tight. This is just some cotton cording I had. I think it might be curtain cording. I don't remember. Anyway, I used what I had. Wrap it around a couple times. Tie it shut. Tie it in a bow though, because you're going to need to get it open. So, a bow or a slip knot or something you can undo. Okay. So now this whole thing goes in the wash and in the dryer, and then um, after I get that done, I'll be back. For me, it's going to be a day or two. For you, it'll be just in the blink of an eye, and I will show you how to put the straps on your new apron. I'll be back. Hi, guys. Okay, so it's been a couple of days for me. It's only been a few seconds for you, um, but after I uh, turned off the camera, I made a few more aprons and some more towel toppers washed them, dried them. Now we're going to open our bag. Um, there's probably going to be a lot, of, a lot of lint and fuzz in here. Um, so kind of open it carefully. I usually open the bag and there's going to be a lot of this. Which is why you put it in a bag. Because if you don't put it in a bag, all of this goes in your washing machine and it clogs your washing machine. So usually what I do is I take a pull a piece out, kind of shake it, give it a shake in the bag. It won't get all the lint off, but it'll get some. Wish I could figure out something to do with all this lint. There was something I could recycle it into. Probably would make good stuffing. There's going to be a lot of it. Sometimes I'll take this and do it outside. <coughs> There's more down there. I think that's it. So there's usually a lot of lint at the bottom of the bag. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm gonna. I might start saving some of it. I th I'm thinking it might make good stuffing for a pin cushion or something like that. I don't know. But you have to keep it in the bag, otherwise it's gonna clog up your washing machine. As I've said before, that's a really expensive fix. Okay, so here is our oven mitt. And it is done. I don't make tons of oven mitts because I don't usually have tons of pockets. Um, usually the pockets end up on an apron. Um, if I have a pair of jeans, um, that don't have a lot of usable denim in them, meaning they have a lot of holes or something and they're in really bad shape and there's not enough to make an apron. Um, those are the ones I usually cut the pockets out of and I make oven mitts. So that one's all done. Then we have these towel toppers. I'm going to show you how to finish those off. But see what happens when you wash it. The edges get nicely frayed. I like the way that looks. And of course you have your apron bodies. Is there still lint coming off of them? If <coughs> you can see the amount of lint on the floor, I'm gonna have to vacuum. Alright, so for the 
the towel toppers. Um, this is a basket of kitchen towels, new kitchen towels. So I buy them when they're on sale or they're on clearance. Um, solids, stripes, checks, pictures, whatever strikes my fancy. Um, I do find with the denim toppers, I don't know, I like something more plain usually, like a stripe. So you need one towel for each topper, and I have four of them. So let's see. So when you buy your towels, they're going to come folded like this. So what you want to do is you want to run a line of stitching across this fold line right here, all the way across from one side to the other side. So first I try to make sure I have all the tags off, I cut off the label. These are like my dullest pair of fabric scissors. Get the other pair. <coughs> okay. So anyway, cut all the tags off all my towels. Make sure all the little plastic things are off. that might be on there, whatever. I usually buy my towels in like a pack of like four or five, usually from like Walmart or Target or someplace like that, they usually have the best price. Okay. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. your stitch length on your sewing machine to the longest stitch length that you have so that you can gather your towel. So you're going to take that line where it was folded in half and we're going to run a, um, a line of stitching all the way across here. You're not going to back stitch. Don't back stitch. You don't want to do that. go ahead and do all four towels. Leave a little space in between each towel if you're doing more than one so that you have some threads to pull when you gather it. So pull this out just a little bit. Okay, so now you have your stitching on here. You can't see it because we have white on white, but you're going to take one piece of thread. There are two here, but only pull on one. And 
just gather it up, pull a little bit from one side, and then pull a little bit from the other side until you have this. Then I'm going to take one of our denim towel toppers and we are going to put the towel inside the little pocket that we made. Until it's about an inch or so up in there. And then we're going to sew the towel in along this stitching line right here. Making sure that you catch the towel and both sides of the denim at the same time. It can be a little bit tricky, but if you're worried about it, um, use some pins and pin it all together. For this, set your stitch length back to um, nor a normal length. On my machine, it's like a three or a four. And make sure you back stitch at the beginning and at the end. you make a modern hanging towel out of recycled denim. So I'm going to finish the rest of my four towels and then I will be back to show you how to finish the aprons. I'll be back. Okay, so here are my hanging towels all done. So now I'll show you how to finish off the apron. So for the apron, on my pattern piece you'll remember I wrote some measurements. So for each apron I need one piece 24 inches long for the neck and then two pieces 30 inches long for the ties. So my work table here has a cutting mat on it with a grid. Um, when I'm painting on here I cover it up to protect it. But I like it, I use it for measuring. So I'm going to cut, I have four aprons. so. I'm going to measure one. And then cut three more that are the same. I told my husband I am out of blue jeans now to make aprons with. So he has to clean his closets out. I need more jeans. Okay, so now the same thing for the tie. So I need two that are 30. They don't have to be exact measurements and of course adjust them if those measurements don't work for you. Um, but keep in mind when you're cutting them, they don't have to be exact. Longer though is better than shorter. You can always make it shorter, you can't make it longer. I like this ribbon because it's just a plain, like a uh, grow grain, like a wide grow grain ribbon. It comes in colors, but I find myself using this off-white color more than anything. One more. Isn't this exciting? I'll show you on my apron that's finished. So you want to so one of the ties here, this is the top of your apron, there's this is where it curves a little bit. So one tie goes here, then the neck piece goes on either side of this part, and then the other tie goes here. I do these all at once without cutting the thread, and then I go back 
And I sew the ribbon in half. And I tuck the raw ends in. You can tell this is my working apron. It's really dirty. I should wash it sometime. Um, so anyway, I'm going to change camera angles again. And we'll go back to the sewing machine. And I'll show you how I do that. I'll be back. Okay. So now I have two of my two ties that are close to me and handy. I've got an apron front. This is the part I was talking about. So one tie goes right here. This is the side of the apron and this is the part that goes up under your arm. And then this is the top right here. So we're gonna start here at this corner. And when I'm sewing the ties on, I fold the raw edge under a little bit. Use a regular stitch length, like on my machine again, that's usually between three and four. Go back and forth a few times. This is gonna, you know, hold all the weight of the apron on the ties and the neck strap. So you want it to last. So like three or four times. Then take your neck piece. And we're going to go up to this part where the neck piece gets sewn on. We're not going to trim the thread, we're going to just pull it out a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to fold the raw edge under and stitch it down. strap out and make sure it's even and flat so that when you bring it around to sew it to the other corner it's not twisted. That's the only trick to this part. If you feel more comfortable using pins then by all means pin this all together before you bring it to the sewing machine so that you know exactly where everything's going to go and that it's going to fit right for you. to my other side corner. Fold the raw edge under. out and then you can trim all your threads. I am going to do my other three aprons and then I will show you how I um, finish it up. I'll be back. Okay so I have one of my aprons. I've got my two ties. I've got my neck strap. So now what I'm going to do is on the neck strap I'm going to start an inch or two above here the top of the apron and I'm going to just fold it and then stitch that closed and go from here all the way around to the other side and on the side straps all I did was I tucked this raw edge under and then folded it in half made sure all the loose frayed edges are caught inside and then stitch it shut and go about the same go all the way up to about here on and do that on, on both side ties and the neck strap on all my aprons. And again, I tend to do it without cutting any um, threads. I don't know if that really saves time. Again, I'm just a lazy crafter, I think. <laughs> Use a regular stitch length and just hold the ribbon two sides together with your fingers. You shouldn't have to pin it, but if you feel you need to, of course do so.
making sure to back stitch or back tack at the beginning and at the end. I think we're stuck over there. Last one, then trim all your threads. Okay, and there you have it. Nice crafting or gardening apron, maybe even a barbecue apron. So there you go. That's what I do with my old jeans. Husband's old jeans. Um, I do sell them in arts and craft shows. They're a pretty good seller. Um, along with the towel toppers and the, hot, the pot holders when I have pockets enough to make some. What do you think you could make with um, old jeans? I'd like to see. Um, post your comments below. And I will um, try to remember to post links to uh, useful websites like Harvest Imports and um, where, you can, where I got the ribbon from. And um, that's it for today. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can do lots of things with like things like old blue jeans and you can make tote bags out of old t-shirts and old dress shirts and just look at what's around you. You can make journals out of junk mail and you can reuse what you have without going out and buying stuff. You don't have to always buy stuff to make great art and fun things. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later.